and welcome to Investors Hangout. This weekly interaction to help you learn and understand savings and investment issues is brought to you by Aditya Birla Sun Life Mutual Fund and Value Research. A new financial year is about to begin and this is the time when most of us get our yearly appraisals. So this is the right time to think about, you know, our investment strategy for the year ahead. And to do exactly that, we have with us Dhirendra Kumar. Welcome Dhirendra. Thank you. First of all, uh, can we begin today's interaction with, you know, listing out uh, factors that one must consider before they start investing? Sure. But before I would like to address all those people who have been a uh, regular at value research online mm -hmm. when watching this, that we always think in terms of constant mm -hmm. that we started doing our 10,000 rupee SIP, 5,000 rupee SIP and you know, SIP has become quite a popular thing. Mm -hmm. And SIP is good, mutual funds say you have, but you know, SIP is even better, you know, you fall in habit of do, continuing with it. But one thing very critical, which people often miss out, that you should increase your SIP amount as well. Mm. And uh, you should increase in terms of depending on your situation that if you, if your income has gone up, mm. so should your SIP. And it can go up even more if you have been able to clear a part of your debt. If you have more free money which can be invested. So look for an opportunity and an excuse to increase the amount of SIP. And the earlier you do, the faster you do, it has a disproportionate payoff when you do it early. And uh, now coming to the very basic, you know, the f first question that, you know, how should people go about choosing it? I think the most critical, you know, the most important factor which any investor should keep in mind is not something which, have, which has a, to do with the market or the investment opportunity or, you know, a great opportunity or mm. a great bargain available. None of that. It is your time frame. Right. And it is your comfort with the ups and downs of the market. Mm. If you are new to the market, you have not been used to the ups and downs, be conservative. Mm. Be with a relatively stable asset which you know, which you can withstand. And second is that if you are investing for the short term, never invest in equity. Mm. Only investing for the long term, consider equity. So this is the only, this is a critical element. If you, most investors, if they keep this into mind, mm. into account, mm. they will be okay. They will get used to it. They will benefit from it and they will profit from, you know, participating in market linked investment. All right. So once all of this is clear, the next step is there are so many mutual funds. How to go about choosing the right one for oneself? Choosing a kind of fund could be complex, you know, because there are 32 kind of official, 32 official kind of uh, category of fund. Mm. But, you know, you can do without looking at or learning about most of them. When it comes to investing, you know, the most important thing is something which only you know. Mm. If you are an investor, you know that are you going to invest for the first time? What is the likely time frame in which you need the money? Mm. What has been your experience? Because, you know, a lot of people also learn from other people's experience. You know, your father or your, uh, you know, uh, brother, if you have been investing and uh, you have seen the ups and downs and gotten used to it, then it's yeah. a different story. Likewise, and then understanding the value of diversification, understanding the value of equity. I think these are things we, because two things matter when, when it comes to investing. One is that choosing the right vehicle and having the right temperament. Mm. Having the right temperament is a matter of time. You have to build one if you don't have one. Yeah. And uh, that takes time. If you, you are investing for the short term, mm. a couple of years, and you definitely need the money, it is for a non-negotiable goal. Mm. Or, you know, it is, it is even closer. In six months to one year time frame, you intend to buy your house. Yeah. And you have been able to accumulate that money. Then maybe take that money out, keep it in a short term debt fund, that is fine. Money within three years, you can well consider a short term debt fund. You will not even be, you will be insulated even from, you know, wild interest rate movement. And uh, when it comes to investing for the long term, mm. then you should consider a vehicle which is, which depends, you know, you can choose a aggressive hybrid fund or a multi cap fund or an index fund and a mid cap fund, small cap fund combination, depending on your experience. Uh, because uh, you have to keep in mind two, three things. One is that your goal is to seek diversification. Your goal is to spread your money over a period of time so that you are able to re reduce the risk of catching a market high. Understanding the expense and making sure that you are able to reduce your expenses on fund management mm -hmm. is also a very important goal because, you know, investing in large caps, 
one should invest in index fund mm. and that is a sure shot way of you know saving money and uh, so i would say that uh, you can get more sophisticated over time keep it simple to begin with be conservative to begin with and then uh, there is a there is a ladder which you have to climb steadily so all you can do is you know ensure that you are disciplined enough to begin with mm. and if you decide to invest in equity and choose a mutual fund and do your sip and make sure that you are not investing any money which is within uh, required within the first 5 years you are fine you will be sorted uh, even if you go wrong with your fund selection you will still be well taken care of and while zeroing down on one particular fund one can always you know go to value research online of course one can <coughs> compare the yeah. uh, fund with its peers sure. and decide on okay now if someone has been investing for a few years say for 3 to 4 years so what would be the right fund to uh, for him to invest in and uh, you know should he venture into index funds and etfs mm -hmm. as well i would say that you know if you have been investing for 3 4 years and you have kept a mainstream you know uh, fund whether it be flexi cap or multi cap or you know index fund or a, a such funds or you know a tax saving fund that is the, that is that is also a great thing to begin with and most of them are diversified vehicles in last 3 4 years have been very eventful if you have seen that covid decline of 2020 then you understand that it is it's it is scary but it is rewarding and how you can actually enhance your reward but i would say that if you are doing this with a multi cap flexi cap and things like that you are fine you don't need to add do anything extraordinary if you want to bring in some element of novelty which has the, also the performance potential yeah. but you know those some of those vehicles are coming to an end because you know sebi has restricted the investment yeah. in those etfs which invest abroad because they have hit their ceiling yeah. as and when it opens up consider those because diversifying geographically could be an important objective second is that you know you can add you know a small cap or mid cap or a micro cap index fund hmm. just to bring a flavor of a, a, you know excitement ex ex not excitement but you know in potential of enhanced return right if you're Because, investing you know, for the long term yeah for excitement do many a plenty you have plenty of other things to do hmm. uh, don't you know don't uh, don't look at investing for uh, excitement but you know uh, consider those to potentially reward it but do it in a measured way do hmm. it in, up hmm. to a to a tenth tune of you know 10% 15% be watchful all right so that's how you can begin investing and plan for the year ahead but before we wrap up today's episode we'd like to take a viewers question sandeep kadyan asks are we about to witness mutual fund bubble burst in the near future uh this is a question which i keep getting and this is a very important question because our general belief is that uh, everything is cyclical what goes up comes down and that is largely true mm -hmm. uh but not in case of a diversified equity scenario that doesn't mean that markets will keep going up only mm. we have seen that you know last week the market went down 3 years back the market went down dramatically for a period of time the market doesn't go anywhere mm. but despite all this you know what we keep saying that when you invest with 5 years time frame in mind then the market generally al almost always goes up mm. and that is something which you should keep in mind and i don't think you know it is as much of a bubble of course you know we never get to know that it is a bubble till it is burst yeah. uh, if we are in the middle of it it is very unreasonable to expect from me to figure it out you know so uh, i i really won't be but i will i'll tell you why i think that it may not be a bubble because uh, there is a possibility that a segment of the market which could be very pricey there could be a bubble and there could be a factor which will be driving it there might be lack of supply or great demand for that or small company stock prices have gone up simply because you know too much money is coming into small cap and mid cap but the fact is that you know if you are diversified and if money is getting invested for the long term yeah. some of these companies will die some of these companies will thrive yeah. some of these companies will middle around you know and that is that is why you actually have a diversified portfolio and uh, that is what actually makes sure that you never lose money if the bubble is burst think the long term and why i feel other reason why it will not, it may not be a bubble mm -hmm. because this time round for the first time in the last 30 years it is entirely driven by large number of individual investors mm -hmm. investing for the long run and investing gradually 
it has never been like this either the market was sometimes driven by fii or you know ipos or nfos where people came with unreasonable expectation huge expectation and when they were disappointing they ran for cover they ran away back with their money with us by swearing that you know they will never come back to the market mm. and that was largely true this time round people are coming they are investing and they are investing month after month and it is it is a gradual thing which is warming up and i think it is still the beginning and the factors which are driving it is still gaining strength it is basically democratization of cell phones mm -hmm. smartphones it is democratization of investment because of aadhar because of you know upi mm -hmm. because of a digital banking so it is the ecosystem which has evolved mm -hmm. and that has democratized and it has reduced the cost so i think you know if it is a bubble then you know the the foundations on which it is being built it is it is going to be a very durable bubble well that's all we have for you in today's episode keep watching the space for more information if you like the show do subscribe to our youtube channel take care bye for now